Welcome to Japan Issues. Should America seek to humiliate Russia in Ukraine? Should the West seek to reach an accommodation with Russia? As Russia and Ukraine battle for control over the Donbass, a controversy has begun to emerge about Western war aims. Should the West, as Henry Kissinger recently suggested at Davos, seek to reach an accommodation with Russia that preserves it as a central part of the European balance of power? Or should America and its allies seek to crush Russia once and for all? On May 27, the Center for the National Interest invited two leading foreign affairs analysts to debate this issue. Melinda Herring is deputy director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. She has published widely on Ukraine, including in the National Interest, Foreign Affairs, and Washington Post. William P. Ruger is president of the American Institute for Economic Research. In September 2020, he was nominated by President Trump to serve as U.S. Ambassador to Afghanistan. I would like to share a part of the audio debate. Hi, I'm Jacob Haldren, the editor of the National Interest, and it is a pleasure for me to welcome two of my colleagues and friends, Melinda Herring and William Ruger, both of whom are card-carrying Republicans. Proud Republicans, indeed. However, a fundamental gulf exists between our two panelists over how to approach Ukraine, and this gulf mirrors the one, both taking place in the Republican Party, in debates more broadly in the United States and in Europe as well. As usual, Henry Kissinger inflamed the debate. At Davos, by putting his finger on a central conundrum, which is: should the West seek to crush Russia once and for all, or, as he suggests, should it in fact seek to arrange a condominium in Europe, much as he did in the 1970s with détente between Western and Eastern Europe? Our panelists have starkly divergent views. And、I'm going to open with Melinda Herring, who will give the affirmative case. Good morning. Thank you, Jacob, for organizing this debate. Good morning, Will. It's great to be with you all. America should seek to defeat Russia in Ukraine. Full stop. We must humble, contain, chasten, and restrain an out-of-control global actor that threatens to plunge the world into ever greater instability. The choice is stark, and it's often not stark in foreign policy. We either cut a deal and wet their appetite, or we cut them down to size and restore a real balance of power. Washington should stop listening to the so-called realists and restrainers. They have been nothing but wrong about Ukraine. They originally predicted that Ukraine would be overrun within days. Wrong. We are more than three months in, and Ukraine is winning. Now these so-called realists and restrainers want us to pressure Kiev to give up. Nothing could be more dangerous for the world order. Kiev has stepped up its support. Washington has stepped up its support for Kiev, and it should continue to do so. There are at least three reasons why. Number one, supporting Ukraine is in our own national interest if we favor stability, peace, and a global order that works. Will, my friend, if you are going to be a consistent realist, you've got to support Ukraine. Vladimir Putin is threatening the world order. He's not conforming to realist dictates. He's not seeking a balance of power, but launching a genocidal war whose aim is to decapitate and destroy the Ukrainian nation itself. This is an ideological crusade more than it is a decision based on rational assessments of power. Russia has become drunk on its own perverse interpretation of great power ideology, and that assessment threatens peace and stability in Europe. Peace and stability in Europe are a core interest of the United States. Number two, supporting Ukraine is also the right thing to do. It's often not an easy case, but it's an easy case with Ukraine. Putin attacked a peaceful and democratic country three months ago. Since then. Russia has engaged in war crimes, in crimes against humanity that are disgusting, that are egregious, and there are credible reports that Russian soldiers have raped and killed civilians. 
There are credible reports that Russia has forcibly displaced hundreds of thousands of children and civilians from Ukraine to Russia. Russia has attacked homes, schools, theaters, and so on in cities across Ukraine. There are 8 million Ukrainians who've been internally displaced within Ukraine, and another 6.5 million of a country of 44 million have fled. We haven't seen numbers like this since World War II. The UNDP estimates that 9 out of 10 Ukrainians will be poor by Christmas if the war continues. Number three, Moscow must be defeated in Ukraine, or it will continue its imperial project elsewhere. The ugly reality is that this war is going to drag on. We've been talking about it in terms of days or weeks. We need to be talking about it in terms of months and years, unfortunately. How do we get a lasting peace? If we want a lasting and durable peace in Europe, with Russia contained, the West should continue to arm Ukraine to the teeth. The news today that the U.S. is going to send sophisticated rocket launching systems is awesome. We need to keep doing that. Kiev will continue to fight like hell. We have to avoid a frozen conflict in Ukraine. Moscow wins if the situation becomes a frozen conflict. Moscow has played the frozen conflict game to its advantage in Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. We cannot let Putin get away with it in Ukraine. The stakes are much, much higher. Now, in this, the real spirit of Reagan, in the defense of free peoples against tyranny, the West must continue to act. As my friend, retired General Philip Breedlove, never tires of saying, right place, right time, right equipment, and this should be our mantra until Kiev prevails. Thank you. Will. Will Ruger, please respond. All right. All right. So first, let me just say clearly that one cannot help but be impressed by the bravery of the Ukrainian people in fighting for their independence from Russia. But the question of this debate isn't whether Ukrainians are brave or worthy of our emotional support or even our military support, but whether America should seek to humiliate Russia. And there, I think the answer is clearly no. Indeed, it would be the height of folly to seek such a goal, no matter how angry one is at Russia or how aligned one and emotional one is uh, in terms of understanding the plight of Ukraine and Ukrainians. So let me start my explanation by doing what we should always do when we think about constructing foreign policy. We need to think about our ends, our goals, our national interests, right? And America's enduring national interests are one, our homeland security, the safety of our country, our territorial integrity, our independence. Two, the conditions of our economic prosperity, such as the freedom to traverse the seas and maintain our space capabilities. And three, our liberal democratic system here at home. And I'm hard pressed to see how humiliating Russia is necessary to achieve those ends, particularly related to the costs it would be required for us to pay to do so. The fact is, is that the US is quite secure no matter what happens in Ukraine, especially given how pathetic the Russian military has proven itself on a battlefield so close to its home. In fact, our wealthy, populous, and militarily capable NATO allies are also quite secure, given that the balance of power favors them relative to Russia, even on their own, and when combined with American power, make it laughable that, you, that Russia, with an economy the size of roughly a mid-sized European state like Italy or Spain, and a defense budget the tenth of ours, that they could seriously threaten the alliance on their own soil. Now let's even, but, but let's just relax that a little bit. Let's even grant for the sake of argument that Ukraine's survival were critical to America or NATO. What is required to safeguard Ukraine is much less than what it would take to humiliate them and far less dangerous. We could continue to provide arms to Ukraine to make sure they stay afloat, but not so much that they aim for maximal goals that could cause Russia to escalate, including to the use of nuclear weapons. The fact is, is that humiliating Russia doesn't do anything for our interests. How does humiliation help us any more than a Russia stalemated by continued Ukrainian survival? It doesn't. And if we took the actions that would be likely to be necessary to humiliate Russia, putting in place a no-fly zone, pushing Russia out of Crimea, taking the fight into Russia itself, that would require much greater U.S. intervention in the war. And I just don't see how that makes young people in Des Moines or older people in Florida any safer. 
And it would threaten to compromise our fundamental national interests, all for revenge, because certainly it is laughable that those actions make anyone in America safer or more prosperous. How would it threaten our ends? Because the only real way that the war in Ukraine would even come close to undermining our vital national interests is if we found ourselves on an escalatory spiral that led to a nuclear exchange between the US and Russia. So we should do everything we can to prevent that from happening, which means setting clearer limits to how much we are willing to push Russia, given the risk of such an escalatory spiral. And if you don't believe me, you should believe people at the Atlantic Council, where Melinda works, because they haven't ruled out the possibility of a nuclear exchange. So Walter Slocum of the Atlantic Council board thought it was possible if Putin, if Putin were pushed too far, as did Alex Verspo of the Atlantic Council. So it is a non-zero possibility with extreme consequences. That means that the risk is too high for the United States. We should also appreciate the second order consequences of humiliating Russia. Um, one is that it would push Russia even closer to China when China is really the only serious strategic competitor of the United States. Lastly, I'd note that it may not even be possible for Russia to be humiliated any more than it already has been without direct US or NATO entry into the war. Can Ukraine really push back to the pre-2014 status quo? You know, there are new reports coming out that say that there are challenges facing the Ukrainian military right now. So it may not even be possible to humiliate them even if we wanted to. So rather than humiliating Russia, we should urge Ukraine to settle short of that. It would be to our interests and even to Ukraine's for that to happen. Excellent. Thank you, Will. I'd like to give 